All right, you're asking for it, so here it is. Listen to this. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome to the 124th episode of the Drinking Partners Podcast. Yes, this is our Darrell Revis episode, because just shout out to him for being the biggest money getter that I've seen come in the league in a while. Get them checks, man. And that's what we're trying to do. But not not just getting the checks. We we provide, you know, we're a shutdown corner over here. We, we we definitely at the top of our game over here at Epicast um, with the Drink It Partner. So our Darrell Revis episode. Again, I just want to shout out everybody who supported me down at the Pittsburgh Improv on May 17th for my first headlining gig down at the Improv. It was a lovely night. Um, everything went as well as I could ever imagine. Uh, shout out to all the supporters. Shout out to the people involved. Uh, one, I want to thank the Improv for having me. Two, I want to thank T. Rowe, Samantha Bentley, uh, Young Izzy, and Terry Jones for bringing that funny before I got on stage. Uh, it was a hell of a show, so we're looking to do that again. Um, it is episode two of two for the day, so if you've been following the podcast, you know that I will probably get progressively more ignorant and quiet because I've been drinking. Day's not here, so you ain't got to worry about too much mumbling. Um, so yeah, I'm here by myself trying to hold it down for the team, but we having a good day, man. We got a, we got a lot going on. I'm very excited about our next guest. Um, if you like the way we sound, make sure you hit up Epicast. So if you're looking to get your podcast to sound better, if you're looking to start your own podcast, if you need help promoting event an event, if you want to advertise on an award-winning podcast, uh, go to epicastnetwork.com slash services. Uh, and tell them that the drinking partner sent you uh, and you might you might have a little something coming to you. Uh, if you're looking for us, uh, and I got to get in my Dave Bracey voice here, but if you're looking for us, you can find us on EpicastNetwork.com slash Partners Pod. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Lipson, and Google Play as Drinking Partners. And you can find us on IG, Twitter, and Facebook as Partners Pod. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the damn thing. Like, I, I've been doing it, like, he don't think I, he don't think I could do that rundown without him, but I definitely I definitely got it got it uh I got it locked in. But when you go on iTunes, man, just go rate and review. Uh, we definitely appreciate the rate and reviews. It's how we know what we're doing well. It's how we know what we're doing well. Um, and that's how we know what what you would like to see from us in the future. So we have a lot of people who come out. They show us love. You know when we on the scene, when we out in the city. Uh, you tell us you love us, so just go to the internet, click that button, and tell the internet that you love us. And uh, always, as always, in lieu of actual rating reviews, I take shots of Hennessy. So if you want to give me a shot of Henny, uh, please do so. You don't have to go and click that button. Um, I do want to read a rating review here. Because now, now what we're doing is, if you rate and review, we'll read it on the podcast. So we got from Big Guy 99 review is called best craft beer podcast there is ed and day are hilarious i love tuning in to find out what they are drinking and who they are interviewing so far this is one of the best windows into what's going on in the pittsburgh entertainment scene yeah shout out to big guy uh 99 that's what we want to do here that's what we want to do here uh epicast is small business partner spot we're a small business we're locally you know born and bred um and we we definitely want to support the local here so, you know, if you're trying to find out what's going on, we definitely want to give you a glimpse into what's going on. And we just have fun doing it. A couple of events we have coming up. Day and I will be a part of the DVE Comedy Festival. So shout out to WDVE, Randy uh, up there, Bill Crawford. We got Val up there. They show mad love. A shout out to them. But we are on the Loaded Show uh, June 23rd. So come out, Dan and I are out there. We're trying to do some things down at Club Cafe on the south side. We, we're returning to Contra Theater on June 24th. And a huge announcement, uh, we're bringing in national headliners, man. We're we, we stepping, we stepping up our game. So our first national headliner will be July 8th, 28th, and 29th. We have Mike Kaplan coming in, sponsored by Apis Meadery and Ryan Heist. It's myself, Day, Sean Collier, T. Robe, and, it, and again, the headliner, Mike Kaplan, that's seen on Conan and Lance comic standing so uh get your tickets at concerttheater.ticketleap.com uh we trying to do something major out here man we trying to we trying to do something big but one thing that we love to do and we always do is we promote local acts local entertainment local arts and uh, i'm actually honored to be in here in the studio 
with one of the local acts, a local rapper here. And I and look, I love Day. That's my guy. But this is a conversation I want to have without him. You know what I mean? Because I don't know what they be listening to all the time. You feel me? But I, I'm on that rap thing. So I'm looking to have a, a very, very, very good hip hop conversation. Uh, we got PK Delay in the building. Say what up to the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, man? We in here. Okay, so. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. First of all, that was one of the coolest what up in, uh, what up to the people. <laughs> like, rappers come with their own sound effects. Like, yeah. I don't, like, how long it take you to get that yah in there? Like, how long you practice about, on about, that yah? About eight years. Man. About eight years on the yah. Uh, we got your manager, <laughs> Jacob Finch, in the building. Say what up to the people. Yeah, it's the dad. Yeah, Jacob took he took our he took our first photographs as partners pod. Like somehow Jacob took him and not Buzzy. Buzzy probably don't want us to say that. Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> we was up. We was, I was mad. I was as skinny as I am now, but I get my weight back up. Uh, but very happy to have you two in the building. Yeah, happy uh, to be here. Did you did you advise him on the yaw or did you like how, how does that the come into the yaw's been. Ever since the beginning, I, I, once yeah. I met him, the y'all's been there, but he's definitely finessed it a little bit. Finessed it, I yeah. see. I like that. You finessing it. It was a little bit. more, uh, a little more aggressive before, but now it's just like, yeah. So, so it was a little more aggressive before you said. So, as a rapper, how do you think? One, how were you when you first started, and how do you think you've progressed till now? Uh, definitely more comfortable. You know what I'm saying. Uh, in the beginning, it was probably like, you know, just trying to find out what you want to do, who you is, and, you know what I mean, the way you want to sound, but I'm comfortable now, you know what I mean? Um, I know you get this question a lot, but I guess I would ask about your influences, and one, one, who are your influence or influences artistically, but two, like, how does it, coming up right after... Uh, Pittsburgh on a national scale has been getting to get respect on the hip hop scene because I guess before Mag and Wiz yeah. on a national perspective Pittsburgh wasn't necessarily recognized and I know yeah. there's the one guy that people are now giving props because he was uh, helping Dr. Dre and I can't remember his name Oh, you talking about the mailman yeah the mailman that's what his name so Hill now District. all of a sudden yeah Hill District shout out to the Hill District because I ain't where I'm, from. I'm not from Pittsburgh but I, when, when people ask where I'm from in Pittsburgh I say the Hill because I grew up a lot in the Hill District like mm. I'm my first place in the Hill District mm. You know, in the hill, I was I was in the Bedford, uh, the New Bedford Jones. So yeah, I, the New Bedford. I, yeah, the New Bedford, <laughs> not 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 Bedford, but the New Bedford. Yeah, you feel me? Yeah. Like, and them Jones was, you know, they was clean, and I felt like I had a little money being in there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Even had a little slide and playground in the back. I ain't had no kids, but I used to sit on the slide smoking. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if you was a shorty that came to my apartment, we sat on the slide and smoked a little weed. You know what we did? But um, yeah, the mailman. So he doesn't get he didn't get the national recognition for his contribution to Dr. Dre yeah. and so people look at the Pittsburgh sound you know being Mac and Wiz uh -huh. so one who are your influ influences in rap and hip hop and then how how is it coming up with Pittsburgh having that defined sign, cause, sound because you don't I, when I listen to your music I don't necessarily attribute you to that Pittsburgh, particular yeah. sound uh, influences um, early out like G-Unit you know what I'm saying a whole lot of 50 Cent I came up you know what I'm saying listening to that real yeah. Yeah, I mean a lot of G unit, a lot of fifty cent, a lot of Lloyd Banks. Um People definitely don't give him enough credit. Yeah, Lloyd Banks is hard. <laughs> he followed me on credit. Twitter too. Word? Yeah, he's hard. So he's a real dude. Yeah. I appreciate uh, that. I fucked with uh Lil Bow Wow a lot, Romeo and them. That's Thank you word. for saying that. Yeah. Thank not, you for saying that. Lil Bow Wow though. Well, here's the thing. All right. Not Shot Moss or whoever this dude is. Fuck this Shot Moss character. I was just having this conversation with a friend of mine. Yeah. Bow Wow got some bangers that people don't like to recognize. Yeah. Also Every hard. thug nigga had like you on their next tail uh -huh. for their girlfriend. Uh -huh. All right. Yeah. Bing, 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 bing. Like everybody, like he was smashing Sierra, fam. Like you gotta respect. Bow Wow, a legend. Little Bow Wow, a legend. You gotta give him that. I mean, he had some cuts, man. And yeah. I appreciate that you are open to recognize that because oh, yeah. people act like people try I don't know what happened with him in this fake flight in this fake uh, yeah, I don't know what yeah, the hell's yeah, happening that's crazy that's, that's the pressure of uh, society being on you yeah but uh, in my older years um, you know what I mean more Wiz Khalifa obviously mm -hmm. Nipsey Hussle Currency. Me and this nigga friends. And then uh <laughs> we friends already. That Crenshaw then, uh, that Crenshaw yeah, mixtape. Yeah, I crazy. met him. He followed me on Twitter too. My life. Yeah. <laughs> never he's a never real one. And uh Lil B, the bass guy. Okay, so right there. Yeah. <laughs> right there. Yeah, that's what drew the line. That's where I'm like, all right, so we didn't all right. So Lil B, how do you feel? How do you feel? So I don't know. Oh, wait, I wanna ask you answer your other question too about um what you say about the 
Pittsburgh so just, sound. Yeah, being with the Pittsburgh automatically throwing a sound on you and then yeah. when they hear you like, yeah. oh wait. Yeah. You know what I, mean? I don't really feel like we got a, a sound too tough here. I can understand why people say that. Mm-hmm. Uh the, the reason why it was probably because of the quote unquote trap music. Okay. Um that was something that been flourishing the past few years. A lot of a lot of niggas on that trap music or that drill music, but uh just me hearing all the music I done heard throughout my life. Like, you know what I mean? The Sade, like the, the Erica Badu, the melody, the melodic type shit. I like that singing type music. So I guess that's what took me to a different lane. You know right. what I mean? Just melodic type music. Yeah, and and I think melodies are becoming more and more influential on, on the rap, hip-hop scene. Um, but I think one of the advantages, because I'm from Cleveland, one of the advantages, I think, being from a Midwestern city and not necessarily having a specific sound. Because yeah. you, you saw in the industry, there was this whole, where's New York? Where's that New York sound? Mm-hmm. And then, like, you know, you got some of it with, like, say, Troy Ab, he was talking about bringing New York back yeah. or whatever, because they have a specific sound that they want to have with the horns and all that. Yeah. You don't necessarily have that in a Midwestern city. Mm-hmm. Like, I, growing up in Cleveland, we were listening to, I was listening to Three Six Mafia crazy, mm-hmm. um, but I was also listening to Dipset all crazy because we didn't have a specific sound, yeah. but we did have a sound that was attributed to us that wasn't necessarily reflective of all the artists in the city because of Bone Thugs and Harmony. Yeah. So Bone Thugs, they brought the singing and the melody in, and they're very understated in the hip hop lineage because I feel like they're very influential, especially now that things have moved to melody. Mm-hmm. But it's not necessarily sp- thought of as specific to that um that region so for you to be able to have the the freedom to roam how often have you you know tinkered with different types of sounds all the time yeah that's what like keep me the most creative because i don't like boxing myself in if i box myself in i'll die you know what i'm saying so like that's why i like you know what I mean? Trying different sounds. I hop on different beats. I mm-hmm. hop on all types of different stuff. And because I listen to all types of different stuff. And sometimes yeah. I'll find myself like, I want to make something like that or that'll heavily influence a song that I make. So I'll never want to stay doing the same shit or stay under one one uh, genre or avenue or nothing like that. Yeah, it seems like um, with, with younger artists, it's, it, it's more a part of, it's looking more into artistry. Mm. Um, when you look at and I think this is where the divide personally this my opinion is this is where the divide comes between older rap fans and and the younger generation the older rap fans they're so focused on how do you rap right yeah. and so now the way the country's moving where like not even just in entertainment and rap but like just in life in general things are more tailored around what are your specific strengths you know what i mean like people go to college now yeah the college route is the way you still go but people don't go to college necessarily to work at the fortune 500 company Mm -hmm. they come they go to network so that they can have these these plugs so they can pursue their own things you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and i think younger younger artists they're more into the artistry creating a sound creating a song um with you having getting the freedom to do that as well as with this new this new wave of artists how do you, how how do you think you're received by individuals have you had the 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 situations where older people are like trying to do oh, you ain't yeah. you ain't rock him like yeah. ain't nobody nah. trying to hear rock him right now think, you know what i mean i think right now uh like what you were saying with the fortune 500 um like how people will go there and network with people because they want to start their own business it's just right now it's like independent right now a lot mm-hmm. of independent businesses independent with the music so i feel like that's you know what i mean the standard right now the end of the independent market the independent mm-hmm. few, that's how people are driving their businesses their uh whatever they trying to do is independent nowadays yeah but yeah i've had older people try to tell me the way that they do it but i mean like i'm not trying to be rude but that way don't be working all the time you know what i'm saying okay. like we could go textbook style old school which which i used to but right now the, on this independent scale, you don't always got to go that way. Well, yeah, I think that was, and I and I know one of the big things in in the industry, or one of the large things in social media, was the Joe Budden Lil Yachty interview where they had the argument. And I think that speaks directly to the point you just made, where Joe Budden comes from, you know, an older season sort of uh, yeah. mindset where you got to go through the label. You know, the label clears this. The label gives you money to do this where Lil Yachty he's in he's in a climate where 
I don't have to go to the label to get clear because no. the label don't have to put up money for no. this visual. I can get fifteen hundred dollars and, and put a whole a nice visual because yeah. the fit, all I gotta do is find somebody with a nice camera. My friends who support me will come yeah. out and shoot the video. You so dress, I don't. I don't. Dress right. Yeah. You dress right. You you got and you have something that people attribute to you. You mm -hmm. have a personality. The um, thing with Lil Yachty, I feel like the, with that whole because I watched that interview. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a student first, so I study the game. And That's appreciated. One thing that I did notice, I just felt like Joe Button really thought that uh, there was somebody like pushing uh, Lil Yachty's agenda and pushing the way that he dressed and the way that he looked. Yeah. And there ain't nobody pushing that. That's coming from that kid's mind. You know what I mean? Like, that's when a part of the uh, other stuff that you were saying about how he was like trying to tell him, you know, how the labels work and all that. I feel like he was just lost. Like he didn't he didn't know that that young dude was really doing that on his own. And that's yeah. how it is nowadays. A lot of us are just coming up with a we, we know how to market ourselves now. We don't need no labels telling us what to do. Right. How to do it. You know what I mean? And you know what? What I think, and I, and I want to get your opinion on this. So what I think is a lot of older people underestimate the individuality. Of, an, uh, of younger people. They feel like people are all into trends. And what I see with younger generation rappers is there, there, there's a trend of individuality. Yeah. Um, and so that's where you get all of these different fashion trends. People wearing nose rings now. People wearing skinny jeans. People mm -hmm. like it's, it, it wasn't mainstream at one point. Uh. It didn't just become mainstream. Like you, you see more of a, as weird as this sounds, even even with people saying that the lyric lyrical content of music isn't where it was, I feel like you still get a very introspective view of artists now because yeah. you get more of a real raw representation of the shit that they're into. Because the music nowadays is more about emotion and yeah. feeling and, and keeping it as real as you can, like the honesty. And that's why I like, you know what I'm saying, shout out to Lil B. Like, a lot of these dudes that's coming up now, they... <laughs> Lil B, I can't co-sign, but I respect nah, you. Nah, <laughs> salute. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't want co-signing, but I do know that he fueled a lot of the younger artists that's out right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It, it was something to look up to. It was like a little barrier that broke. You know what I mean? He was real raw with it, real honest with it, and mm -hmm. some people took that uh, for what it was worth And that's why A lot of artists Is raw and honest But I it's think, more about Feeling nowadays And that's why People feel it And and that's what music is though Music Music creates a feeling And you know However you get to that feeling That's how you get to that feeling Like if, if a person Makes music That sounds good And yeah. gives you the feel That they're trying to uh, Come Give Or come across then I think it's effective music. Like exactly. I've never, I've never hated on anyone. I enjoy all types of music, and I enjoy an individual who can who can listen to a Nipsey Hustle mm. and listen to a Lil B and respect their artistry like in it. both senses. I wanted to ask you, Jacob. Now I don't know if you manage several artists or if you've been managing long. How do you, from your perspective and and, and your um, your role in all of this? Uh, with him being independent, how do you think that's changed in the industry over the years where artists have become more independent? Like you as a manager, um, you're no longer sitting there talking to labels. Now you're you're more trying to talk to the people. Well, originally I was like drawn to PK creatively because like, I mean, I met, I've only worked with PK for like a, like a year and a half now, two years. Mm -hmm. And like, I think with all these platforms, all the social media, it's just like... Uh, you can put yourself out there. He, PK's done a very, very good job of putting himself out there. Like, I see the numbers on YouTube. Yeah, man. just it like... It takes a while to get to them numbers. Just, I mean, just like... It's just crazy how quicker... How how quickly you can spread things and how fast they go away. So I think like the old way of things, like uh, things, uh, music or videos, like may have stuck around much longer. But now, uh, like the current state of things, I think, it. I think it's just very quick. Like people forget quicker... Uh, but they also expect, they like expect, uh, as well. So it's, I mean, I don't, it's just like, it's, 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 uh, I don't know. It's, it's different. It's totally different. Yeah. No, I, I think, um, so do you, so personality wise, when dealing with an individual, how, how, um, how, how important is it to have a really good personal relationship with your artist now being that it's not just, you going to a corporate entity and dealing with a corporate entity, you're now dealing with a person who at, at a click of a button, whether you say this is a good move or not, I can have this out to the masses. Um, so how, how important is it to you to understand this individual and not just, okay, we have this goal set and this is how we get to this goal set. 
No, yeah, I agree. I mean, like, uh, the friendship came first with us, That's dope. but I think, uh, and it doesn't, it doesn't always have to come first, but I think it's a hundred percent necessary. Yeah. I think you definitely need the friendship. You need that, the need that trust that comes with friendship to, to put this stuff out there. Um, yeah, no. Nah, otherwise, I, I definitely, um, I, I, uh, so I have, I have a, a, a very close friend who's a rapper. His name's Radon, and he, um, he, he talks to me a lot about the the business of rap and it's it's uh i think you guys and i'm talking to pk i think you all are not respected for your business mind as much as you should be mm-hmm. i mean there's there's a psychological understanding of of people's interests and how to to get to people yeah. that i think is understated like cuz when I, when i think as a consumer when i think of music my thing is oh if the music's good then I'll be on it. Mm-hmm. But that's not necessarily the case. I yeah. mean, there are a lot of people, there are a lot of PK delays everywhere mm-hmm. that I ain't even never heard of. Yeah. Um, so how do you think, how do you think you touch the people? I think my business man is, is good. I think my business man is great, actually. Um, like when we dropped the dad EP, we did a release party at Threads on Carson and um, we reached capacity in there, you feel me? Uh, the album wasn't even out yet at that point in time, but all the hard copies sold out right then and there. We came in there with merch for everybody. All the merch sold out. So I think one thing that my brand does that a lot of people's brands don't do when they first starting up is I, I'm in contact with the people. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not <clears throat> just a dude that you see online or, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, you only see here and there. Like, I go out, talk to the people, you know what I mean? We link up. I'll smuggle a joint with them, drink with them. I'm at the shows with it, kicking with them, taking that's flicks. Important. And uh, they could, I'm, 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 you could touch me. You feel me? I'm, I'm real. You yeah, that's 3D. important. Like, for people to feel like they're part of or know someone who's on their ascension to stardom, yeah. like they, they, you know, they'll invest in that more because they feel like, yeah. you know, I mean, I'm close to this person. Um, yeah. and, and being a real person, if there's any takeaway from this podcast today, be a real person and it helps. Like it's helped me like in it. my personal situation with, with comedy. Like my personal endeavors have been enhanced a lot by mm. the fact that people think like I'm a real person. Yeah, you, know you gotta, be, you gotta actually, be realistic. That's huge. Yeah. That's like, yeah. It's crazy how, I yeah, I mean, it's like a, you don't. I feel like there's. You don't see a lot of real people yeah. anymore. People a lot of, lot of, lot of uh, robots yeah. out here. Yeah, you know it's what not, man. Like, and you don't like for me. Um, I didn't even really understand what I was doing as far as building this goodwill with people yeah. until I had my accident, and then I was, I, you know, I was on the break of death, and then everybody's reaching out, and then all of a sudden these great things start happening for me because mm-hmm. people want me to win. Because at the end of the day, you don't have to be the closest to a real person; you no. don't have to know them personally, but you know exactly where you stand with a real person. And as humans, we appreciate that because you, because yeah, everybody sure. just trying to sell you something out here. Yeah, everybody yeah. just trying to sell you an image or sell you a product. We uh, talk about this all the look, time. Man, we really look, talk Jake, about Jake, look, we be talking about this all the we time. Really, yeah, I mean, we in the Berg right now, you feel me? Um, it's an interesting time in Pittsburgh right now. I don't really got like too much to say about <laughs> the scene. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's definitely fun right now. You know what I mean? There's a lot of interesting stuff going on, but we be talking all the time about how like, you know what I mean? There's, there's, there's realistic people. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then there's people that really walk around acting like, their Instagram accounts, yeah, it's just or, or their Twitter accounts. Like they act like these, these profiles, and it's mm-hmm. just I don't know, man. Like what's up? Look, with I them, see Jay? you. You're 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 Ed Bailey, right? Like you. Uh, that's I, why I, I went with my government name on my. That's what I, mean. I I still feel like I, when I see you on social media, I still feel like I still I, I feel like I see you, right? Uh-huh. Ain't nothing else to be. You don't like. You're not afraid to go to like a cookout with your family or like go to you know what I mean and be Ed Bailey. And talk about being Ed Bailey, and uh, I feel like it's like I feel like with uh, social media, like it's dangerous. Like you have to have a brand now. In right. 2017, you have to like the, that buzzword gets tossed around a lot, but like you have to like build this brand up, right? But like you don't want to. I don't know. Maybe you do, but I don't know if you like want to become that brand. No, like, you can't do walk you around. Be the, like Ed Bailey, the brand, or Ed Bailey, the person. Yeah. You know. Well, like, so for me, and. And I don't know. So when, when I'm thinking about it, because I'm just becoming more brand conscious, right? You know, at, at first I'm just doing comedy, but I'm becoming more brand conscious. So my brand 
Like, I would say, if someone asked me to define it, I'm the hip, cool, urban dad. That's who I am. I'm the, nah, it's real shit. Like, because I feel like it's underrepresented. Yeah. Like, I'm a 30-year-old, 31-year-old man with two kids. I still, you know, I still smoke weed. I still go hang with my friends. Like, because I do comedy, I'm out late at night. I'm still doing all these things. But mm -hmm. the most important thing is my family unit. You know what I mean? So, when I get a chance, I'm a you know, highlight the family unit. And because of the things I've been through, I'm kind of a positive dude, not overly positive where I'm always, you know, you know, you meet them overly positive people that you- Yeah, lying you know, like a motherfucker. Yeah, you ain't like, got positive yeah, yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm not like that, but Hell I do no. have a different outlook on life. So I, I like to be my brand on the internet and in person. Um, it depends. I think it just depends on what your brand is. Like when I look at, when I look at PK and I look at his visuals, I'm like, all right, here's a dude who's not afraid to talk about the things that people might say are, are weird. Nice. Things that, that people might say are, you know, all right, maybe in a social sphere, you don't want to talk about this or you don't want to highlight this. But this gentleman, he's he's comfortable with that. Yeah. And to act out your brand in person may be a little difficult, mm -hmm. but to be your brand organically, yeah. I think you could do that. Yeah. And I think that's probably why people gravitate to yeah, you. Yeah, because there's people that... No, nah, you do make a like crazy point right there. There are people who act like their brand, what they think it is. Mm -hmm. But there's people who are their brand because that's who they are. That's what... Their, their, their self is Like that's yeah. who their brand is You know what I'm saying I feel like I'm my brand Whatever If you want to brand me or not I've been PK Delay Since I was 12 13 years old So you know what I'm saying I couldn't make I can't hop I couldn't hop on Instagram When I was 13 And make a At right. PK Delay At, at You know what I mean I, right. I couldn't do that I was already that Out the gate You know what I'm saying When I even wanted to start Doing some shit like that You know what I'm saying And that's Richard special Simmons. in itself yeah. though I said like Richard Simmons Like he's, he's yeah. Richard Simmons I feel like Richard Simmons yeah, he's that. He, uh, he is. He is. <laughs> Facts. He's Richard Simmons, bro. Yeah. I, did he just have a story out? He <laughs> you just got sued the, or some shit that happened? Or what was happening no, with Richard like this, Simmons? No, this crazy podcast came out called, like, Finding Richard Simmons. Or Missing Richard Simmons. Yeah. I guess right now he's not doing, he's not going outside anymore or talking to anybody. Because fuck the people. Because he's exhausted. I mean, yeah. like, the dude was, like. You're harassing that man. Yeah. <laughs> but I do think that, and this is, like, it's a little bit, like, off the path. But, like, I don't know. He, like, lives his, he, like, lived his brand out that he created but that's why his brand is still relevant yeah that's why i can be relevant in 2017 i don't know when the last time richard simmons did a workout tape yeah, me either. <laughs> you know what i mean but, but we still talking about him but you're still talking about him because at the end of the day it's been consistent He's been this dude in weird little bitty shorts before little bitty <laughs> shorts were popular uh, with the weird curly hair. Like, he's been that guy. And I think that, yeah. But to go off of that, like, right now, the current state of Richard Simmons is he might be a little depressed. And so be. living your whole life out as a brand and, like, giving up your identity to that brand. We we don't know the effects of that yet. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, this Instagram, this Facebook, like, all this is just, this is all kind of starting and who knows what it'll be like in like five, ten years when you've been you've been a brand. You've decided like you look back and you've been a brand for like. Oh no, we know we know what depression looks like. It looks like them struggle <laughs> plates that people put on Instagram around Thanksgiving. Them paper uh, plates with them them dry ass beans and all that. Like yeah, you you're not happy. Shit. You're not happy with life, are you? Like you even take this photograph and put a filter on it. Yeah, struggle yeah. beans, <laughs> struggle, struggle <laughs> plates. That's what they call. They call <laughs> struggle <laughs> plates. Yeah, them, my life. struggle plates. Like how did you even hit send on that? How did you hit okay <laughs> on this struggle plate where you know people eating good today? Uh -huh, like, uh -huh. You know we eating the best we ate all. Year year today you, that paper you plate put up. that fucking plate out there like you need to see a therapist hey at least they eating though bro. at no, least they true. eating i like the way you think about it but just eat inside you know? <laughs> yeah you probably don't gotta post that up <laughs> every time i pay a bill i don't put the bill online because it might have a past due notice on it that's know? the internet nowadays man <laughs> anything you doing nowadays you gotta drop that shit on the net man so what do you think the the traps of the internet are like coming up as an artist in the internet phase a uh, huge trap uh, you know what I mean? Even myself, I get into this sometimes. Sometimes you, you look at like Twitter as a diary or something, bro. You mm -hmm. might. So it's cool to put your thoughts on there or put some funny shit up or, you know what I mean, connect with the people and right. put, put up the latest music, promote your stuff. But sometimes people get on there and post a little too much or get a little too personal. And it's like, that's one thing to avoid. And I think another trap too is just being on that motherfucker too much. Yeah, get off the net a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I think well, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Um, so how, how how difficult is it to manage or balance 
PK the rapper versus PK the internet personality? Um, it's not hella hard, but it's it's uh, you just gotta take it with a grain of salt. You know what I mean? I just feel like it's not that hard with me though, because like the shit I say on Twitter is something I'll say in real life. Like half the time, the stuff that I put up on Twitter is something I just went down, like or I just just <laughs> said, or somebody, one of my bros just said, or reporting so, live. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying. And that's another thing about the diary thing. Sometimes you might say a little too much. Mm. You didn't need to say that. You didn't need to post that. You, you don't, don't need to. Step in, Jacob. It, no, just, <laughs> if you get really upset, right? Yeah, yeah you, you get, don't want to share all that. My Especially, life, yeah, it's you know, like, fuck uh, up. I didn't did that shit. I do that shit. You know what I mean? Get too mad, you fuck. Uh, hop on Twitter, and t- 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 <laughs> then you delete it a little bit later. Yeah. You feel me? Like it, it happens though, but it's, don't do that too much. It's crazy to be in this time where that thing is is available. Like yeah. for you to, you, you feel an emotion, you go right to uh, right to Twitter. You know, you go right to Facebook. Not and then Facebook everybody so know your damn problem or your damn everybody business. Everybody know what's going on. Like, And that be making me wonder, like, what did the people, what did the baby boomers do when they was mad as hell? Like, what did they do? You know what I'm saying? I'm a youngin. So Most what? of the baby boomers, they just had a whole nother families that they was dealing with. So <laughs> you had your main family as a man, then you had your side chick where you had uh, two kids with her. You had to have your side family. Uh, yeah, you yeah. had the side family. We, we might need to start making some side families to deal with this bullshit. <laughs> You know what? I, <laughs> you know what? I need to get a couple more zeros in my bank account. Before like you if do I, a sad if home. I got six figures, if I get two more zeros, I get six figures. Like I'll be straight. Start a whole other side family. You do Man. well. You yeah. got six figures. You can have a side family. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, or two. Two is a lot. It's tough. Because I got to live in, so, you know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. a lot to deal with. Just time management, too. If you had two side families, that would be difficult to budget your time. Yeah, if you, know? you got kids, yeah. I but feel it, like yeah, like two sad wives. There, there are certain cultures where very successful men have side. What's that side word? Wives, uh, polygamy. polygamy. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Shouts out polygamy. <laughs> now, I don't, I'm not Mormon, and I don't know any any Mormons. But isn't that like a is that a part of the? Yeah, they is can that have, part of Mormon culture. I don't know. They can have mad. Wives. They can have mad wives. Can you do that? I don't want a lot of wives. I don't, I don't either. Wanna, I don't. <laughs> I like mean, not a if, lot of wives. I'm talking about side families, though. This side is like, family yeah, we talk is different, different yeah. right? Like, you leave family A and you can go to family B. Yeah, with a side family, if you family B, you know exactly where you stand. Yeah, right? think about how fun that would be. <laughs> you tired of your main family A and you go crack, you get a cracker with family B. <laughs> like, two different lives. Now, with family A, you wearing a dad hat. With family B, <laughs> you might be in a beanie something. or some fitted, or, or you don't wear no hat. Watch no different hat. shows with different families. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I might watch... Uh, Scandal with this family. Got Westworld with this family. Westworld, you know what I mean? My uh, my deep culture family. I might go watch something deep culture. Fact. So we we yeah, it's a science to everything. So with um with the music, so what personality do you? Well, I guess you with you, your personality is aligned more so. Um, but I think so when I think of older music and I think of newer sound, right, I think like with older music, for example, you said, where did the baby boomer culture go to yeah. when they had these things happen? They put it right into the music, right? Like directly. So their music sonically isn't as as fun and happy. It's yeah. as impactful, yeah. but it's not necessarily something that you listen to all the time. Uh-huh. So like, for example... I have this long-lasting debate going on with people with Kendrick Lamar, right? Yeah. And my thing is I like Kendrick as an artist. I, I respect him as an artist, all that. But not every Kendrick um, project I can just listen to on a whim. Like, I got to be in a certain mood. Bro, I be telling niggas that. But you can't say that about Kendrick now. Mm-hmm. But a PK, I could put PK on driving to work, driving home. I Because it, it, it puts you in a place yeah. where you want to feel good. Yeah. And I feel like, so... That's where people are now. Because I'm in P-World. You're in P-World. And P-World, if you in your own world, you feel good about it. Yeah. So do you when, you, when you're when you're thinking about these and the inspiration of the songs that you put out, where does that come from? What, what's your process like? I mean, that's why, it's cool what you, that's, what, that's why it's cool what you said about like how the Bambi Boomers was like, you know what I mean? They would go put it into the songs instead of, like I do that too. I put it into the music, you know what I'm saying? I think that's one of the things too, like, a lot of people nowadays, they might just do some turn-up music. I do my turn-up music sometimes, too, but, you know, sometimes, however I'm feeling, I go ahead and just straighten the boob. I'm hopping in there talking about how mm-hmm. I feel. Yeah, I think that's what's cool.
cool about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think you you have an ebb and flow to your songs as far as feel. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's consistent as far as the music, the production. It's consistent, but the feel from different songs are different. Like you got the what is it, mood ya? Yeah, that's in my mood. Yeah. yeah I, well, so first of all, I apologize for making that shit sound super corny. No, you didn't. <laughs> nah, nah. A lot of people say like, it like when that. you say mood ya, like I, I want to be a little more hip than that, but like. Mood, yeah, like that's 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 more of a turn up yeah, record. Like that's yeah. like just even looking at the visual, and your visuals add so much to the records mm-hmm. because Shout out you to get Jake. the you get the exact feel of the record visually. Yeah. You get that, like, and I was just like we were just talking to North Country Brewing, which I'm I'm sipping on the Black Snort Stout, uh, right, the Buck Snort Stout right now. That's what we drinking on. Uh, PK, you know, he a rapper, so they got liquor. They got actual liquor. Like I'm on the brew too. You got, you got the, but you got the liquor. Like y'all got yeah, the, we got big, the liquor. This this they got the brew. big is, bottle too. Like, that's Craig. Shout out to that's Craig Bittner. Shout out to Craig Bittner real quick because yeah. this is definitely his Jack D Honey. You know, know what I'm Yeah, I, well, I do like the honey, the Jack Honey on ice. Like good, we, yeah, it's yeah, good. It's, like it, op- like my boy said, it opens it up. You know what I mean? It's it's definitely good. I got my mom's drinking that too. Like I don't I don't mix that with nothing. Yeah, Jack Rappers always got big bottles though. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey y'all, they just stay with big bottles. But Jack's my favorite. Jack is well. Jack ain't my favorite. I mean, I'm a Henny guy. What's your favorite? I like Henny Hennessy. too. I'm an '80s baby. So I Hennessy was my first. Well, not my first. So I got my first drink, rum and coke. I was like eight years old. My aunt gave it to me. <laughs> Cause I had one of them aunts who used to have a bunch of parties. Cool aunt. Yeah, just yeah, yeah like yeah, cool, cool aunt. Cool aunt. It was weird too, cause like my parents would send me over there, cause they wanted to go on a date that weekend. And I'd be like, yo, we better off being at home at the crib, cause she <laughs> about to have about thirty people in the house, and we just gonna keep coming out the room, and eventually somebody gonna give us liquor. So my first drink was rum and coke, but like Hennessy was my thing. Like so I was fourteen, I've been drinking Hennessy. Like that's actually the, that was the first liquor I ever had was Hennessy. You are. A very good person. You ain't had honey the first time you drank. Uh, yep. No. I can tell you the place. I can tell you which high school dance it was. Oh, they were saying what high they school? They were mixing it. We was mixing it with with Coca Cola, but it was Hennessy. I don't yeah, know why. Like at the time, like I don't know. You know. So why don't you drink? You, mix, now, you take bro? anything in high school. You take any liquor and any drink, whether it's Gatorade, Coke, vitamin water, very and then true. you mix them together. That's like very how true. you make drinks in high school. But think about the Hennessy. See what I learned is. You could have a different personality amongst like like even Liquors. going through college, you feel me? Like I didn't drink like a lot of people in college was drinking Nikolai and Vladdy. Mm-hmm. I, I, like when I was in my clear phase, because everybody go through a clear phase. I think dudes. That's the do. first one. Yeah, for you real, gotta you gotta get that out the way. Yep. You gotta go through the vodka phase. I yeah. was on a goose. I was drinking Goose and Belvedere. Shouts like out to I'm the Goose. With the Can't goose do vodka and, anymore. Because this one, Jeezy was out. Goose. And Jeezy and had goose the Goose was in the rap lyrics. Yeah, Goose was in the rap lyrics. And, and the I think Jeezy had like a Belvedere sponsorship. So you come with a long bottle. Like you different when you come in the house party with a bottle of Belvedere. Right. They like all the chicks like, oh, pour me hey, some. You like, yeah, I'm going to pour you some. And I'm going to, you know. But mm-hmm. that's not going to be. But then, you know, Hennessy, I had to go back to Henny because that's, that's the thing. Like you got you to gotta have your drink. And Henny go with any sound. Anything you on, anything you're doing, anything you're listening to, you can have Hennessy. You can have Henny and Coke because you at the bar. You can have Henny straight at the crib because you had a rough day. Facts. You can have Henny on ice because you watching the game. This is all facts. All facts. Henny good. And they tried to say they was taking Henny out of the bag, but I think niggas was lying because no, I just wait. went to the I went to the liquor store and I saw all the Hennies. I was at Tiki Lounge yesterday. Yeah. They don't have honey anymore. Well, I don't that know, happens a lot. No, really? something must be true. They well, said that they don't a take, lot they of don't... places didn't have Hennessy. Really? Yeah, so a lot of places that don't necessarily like a darker clientele don't have that dark drink on that. Mm-hmm. Like, there's been mad places where I've gone to a Pittsburgh where they don't have Hennessy, but they have Crown. And I'm like, listen, fam, if you if you got Crown, you might as well put the Henny on that because we, we, we know where we going second. Crown's good, though. Yeah, well, Crown's not a bad drink. Like, even with the Crown Apple, the Crown Apple with cranberry juice, good as hell. But if you got crown on deck, just put the henny on deck. Like you're not inviting a certain Facts. element because you got Hennessy. Just come put the henny on deck. Most things can't afford Hennessy at the club anyway. <laughs> Depends on the henny shots is a little a little expensive. Bro. Like the, the henny, henny, shot, shot, henny shot is eight dollars. The yeah. cheapest is eight dollars. That's the yeah. cheapest henny That's shot. That's the cheapest. I, I don't pay twelve dollars for some henny in the club. Before. Really? Oh, you go to certain spots. You yeah. talking about fourteen dollars for yeah. this much henny and that much coke? Yeah, it just tastes like straight coke. You gotta be committed. 
You gotta, you gotta really committed. like Henny. You gotta really be about it. You gotta it. really like. I think it's just more like you know, like that hype beast shit. You know what I mean? Niggas be like, oh, I need that Henny, man. I'm gonna drink the Henny. Tonight. A lot That's of people it drink is. it because it's it's, it's the it's happening beast, thing. Yeah. But like, I it was my first like, yeah, you know I mean, growing up like, yeah, you was you, on it. When you was experiment on like weed and Hennessy, you went together. You know what I mean? Like, and it's terrible. That I was so young doing it, but I was, you know, what I mean, I had a really good GPA, got a scholarship, scholarship to college and all Look. that. So, yeah, so I'm gonna hit the Henny. Yeah. I'm gonna hit the Henny bottle. I earned this. Like I worked through college, uh, high school, so I earned this Henny. Uh, so that's good. We gotta get back to the rap though, because I'll talk about the drink all day. So, yeah. <laughs> with the rapping, um, how did how did you how did you start? Let, let's start at the at the impetus of PK. Yeah. Cause you say you've been PK from 12 years old, which I think is admirable. Cause a lot of people, there are certain stages in life where they have to develop who they are. But if you've been able to be true, be true to who you are and and find that at 12, that's great. Yeah. And I think it's, it, it lends to being a successful rapper because mm-hmm. you can have that consistency. So at what point did you decide, you know what, I can put these bars together to get a feel for people and I can make good music. Yeah. Well, early in the, early in the race, like I used to be Lil Hawk, you know what I'm saying? I stuck what my name used to be and I used to just uh I had like a little piano okay. and if you press the button it would make like a beat like <laughs> the like, keyboard dip. yeah, yeah I remember that but it was real titty and you could record you could record <laughs> like a melody behind it so I'll just rap on that all day and my dad uh my dad's older so he got like uh yeah like a cassette tape recorder so I would just record myself mm-hmm. on the cassette uh tape recorder and I still got those to this day That's So I gotta go check them out And um, we had video cameras In the crib So I was always In front of the camera Just rapping Spitting freestyles So you a little bit Ahead of the curve oh, As yeah. far as what's happening now As far as just Taking taking ownership On yourself Using using the thing, the means That you have yeah. To have yourself documented Yeah we used to um, And then I'm, I linked up With my bro uh, Joel In second grade Okay. Joel Kellum, he on the scene too. We killing shit yeah, right Joel now. Joel Kellum, yeah, yeah. He, his that. name's Pet Zebra right now. Um, <clears throat> the chill guy, and we rap together. But uh, I met him in second grade, and he rapped too. So we used to act like we was G Unit. You know what I'm saying? He used to be Fifty. I was Lloyd Banks. People and, don't give G Unit enough credit. Uh, G Unit, yeah. that Beg for Mercy album goes. I'm Crazy. gonna listen to that to the car. And I smell pussy. I was like, yeah, <laughs> it's not is that you, me. man? <laughs> I smell pussy. To make a commitment, so let me breathe. Yeah. Oh, that nigga Lloyd Banks went yeah. crazy. Don't let me start. Don't but, let me start. This is what happens when Dave's not uh, here, because then facts. I can really get into the rap thing. You know what but nah, y'all just rapping on beats all day, and then uh, we was recording our own videos on YouTube, putting them on YouTube. Shitty videos, by the way. Uh, his little sister will hold the camera. Little Sid Loke, she would, you know what I'm saying, hold the camera, record us. But we, we've we been rapping since day one. That's what a lot of Hill niggas do. We just rap, you know what I'm saying? Since yeah. day one. We all rap freestyle, beats with our mouth. We just been rapping since day one. Just rapping. All, yeah. All from the beginning. No, yeah. And those, those quote unquote shitty videos from the beginning become nostalgic as you as you grow yeah. and get better. We like, always go back and look at them. Yeah. But like, the thing that really, that really made me want to rap, though, I went to my mom and my sister... Got tickets to this Bow Wow concert, little Bow Wow concert, because I ain't saying Bow Wow, little Bow Wow concert. <laughs> and uh, they wanted me to go. I didn't want to go because I was hating on Bow Wow for real, because I was like, damn. Like, <laughs> well, the, well, the climate makes you hate on Bow Wow, but when you look at him, you're like, all right. No, I was hating on him because I was young and I was just like, why is my sister like tweaking him like that? Yeah, too. why like is my Bow sister wow, tweaking yeah. him? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I went to the show, bro's energy was crazy. Bro running left, right to the stage. He hopping out, you know what I'm saying? Going crazy. I'm like, I could do that. Mm-hmm. You feel me? I'm already rapping. I know how to do that. So that's why I was like, I'm trying to turn up. I really do this rap shit for real. The girls was in there fainting. They like 12 years old. Something going on with their little vaginas. They go, oh, no, wow, yeah, wow. y'all little bitches don't know what's going on. And it was crazy in there. I was like, I got to rap. I, yeah, I, I, I respect. I kind of envy that, that perspective just in the sense that you got to go see. You had someone, you know, when you were younger who mm-hmm. was clean enough where you can go see and be like, you know what? I want to do that. Yes. Because me being with com- being in comedy, I couldn't go to a comedy show. they cussing and, and all wi- that. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. witness it. But for you to be able uh, to clean see lyrics. that on stage and I see the energy, just even in your videos, I see the energy that I, I would predict that you bring to the stage. And it's, I, I, I have to ask you, how cool is it 
Because like when I do comedy, right, so I tell a joke, and I kind of know, even with my jokes, I know exactly where people are going to laugh. Yeah. I know exactly what my punch is, what, what people are going to laugh at, right? But I don't get to necessarily control the energy in the mm-hmm. room. You know what I mean? Like, I tell a joke, if it's not funny, then I don't get nothing. So I can go from people laughing at my shit to, to people nothing. being be like, nigga, what? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like... When you're putting on a concert or you're doing a performance of a set, yeah. you set the energy in the room. Like you go up, you do one thing. The next rapper has a totally different yeah. energy. And How does that feel? Like what type of high is that to be on stage and just control everybody's just Yeah. It's it, you know, you, it's you definitely it's something puppeteering you, with yeah, these people. It's definitely something you gotta have in you because I know a lot of niggas get on stage, but they don't got it like I got it. You know what I'm saying? That's not even being cocky or nothing. I just been studying for so long and the crowd control is something important mm-hmm. but i mean last month we just had the show with jimmy wapo shout out jimmy wapo um at mr smalls it was 500 plus in there crazy yeah. energy. was it standing room that time or yeah i was okay. standing and then there was uh people up in the little um i don't know what them little seats up the vip seats yeah, and the all balcony, yeah the balconies yeah. yeah they was full up there so but the crowd control was crazy anything i said they attentive they listening and that's just because i told them First, you know what I'm saying? Started the show. I need y'all energy just as much as y'all want, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got just the same as how I say I'd be out there talking to the people. It's the same on stage. Like, you know what I mean? Girls was in there fighting and shit like that. And I tell them too. I cut the music <laughs> off. You feel me? I'm like, bro, cut the music. Like, I talk to the females. I'm like, y'all got to quit fighting. You know what I'm saying? That like, adds to a show. Yeah. I, I will say that because I went to um I went to ASAP when he was at Stage AE like a couple years ago. Yeah, he turned it up. And... People start fighting, Aww. and one of the, the the biggest memory I have of that actual concert, and I'm I'm an ASAP fan, was him talking, not getting the like stopping the dudes from getting kicked out and being like, "Yo, it's all love." That's what I, I said. The same thing. And, and nice. those and like when you when you when you're watching the artist and they controlling like your your hypeness and all that, and then they can they have that level of humbleness or that that moment of like humility where it's like, "All right, listen, man, I just want us to have a good time." I don't want them to get kicked out. Yo, I need you to chill, sweetheart. I don't know you, but I need you to chill out because everybody in this joint is trying to have a good time. Then that dude standing in the far left in the back who's been vibing with you, he going to love you because he's like, I can go see this motherfucker all the time. Like I can be he took at the an time event. To yeah, make he sure this the, is right like, for me. He's very invested in what the fuck is going on. He's right. not just performing. He's 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 living through it with us. Yeah. Like, and I think that's what's really cool about being a musical performer is like me being a comedian. I'm telling y'all the jokes, right? So you ain't no moves that y'all do. There no dances that y'all do. I'm just telling y'all the jokes. By the way, my cousin calling me from in the joint. I'm going to have to, damn. I know the but, feeling, though. <laughs> but um, yes. to, you know, be able to control all of that and for the people to be looking at you to feel like you're experiencing this with us. Yeah. That's dope as hell. And you are, though, because, I mean, even as a, as a fan, you spend time out in the crowd. You know what I mean? You mm-hmm. spend time watching shows. But when you up there, you know how I feel to be in the crowd bored as hell. Or in the crowd, really excited, and I'm just trying to get them how I feel. Like when I'm out there, I want to feel that same way. Yeah. So when you when you're putting your visuals together, I want to touch on your visuals because yeah. I think they are kind of a branding thing for you. Yeah. Just a different type of visuals. What's the mindset behind it? How do you go into um, deciding how you want that visual to come across? Yeah. I mean, most of the time it's based off the music, and I mean we still like working on the, uh, the visuals as we go. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? We always trying to come up with concepts. And uh, Jacob, even though he manages me, he do my visuals too, Alden. Um, and um, they just, you know what I mean, see a vision for me. Sometimes we put it together and, and just put it out. But a lot of time we try to get the concepts going for the videos, really. But, I mean, most of the time we just chop it up, put it together, and, and we, we put that work out. So who... Um, who- Who's the lead on how the visual comes out? Or is there any dissension with how that goes? I always ask brewers as far as the label. So I got to ask you about the visuals. Like, yeah. I mean, how, what's the process behind, like, is, is the, are you all sitting in a room like, all right, this is what I want to do? And somebody's like, nah, you should do this. And then yeah. all of a sudden, Oh, yeah, like, we definitely, I mean, we, we, you know what I mean? We'll bicker about shit like, ah, oh, that's weak or that's nah or that's blah, blah, blah. Like, but eventually we'll get to some type of middle ground and shoot the shit. And if not, then we just got to keep. 
linking up, chopping about it, but they do a good, great job, you know what I mean, most of the time getting me looking right visually, and everybody can attest to that, because everybody want to know who do my videos, because they don't see these dudes, like, the other people that do these videos out here, you know what I mean, you could contact them, go get your videos, but, you know what I mean, I got the legend shooting me up, and... You can't, you can't, you can't get the videos I get. I think, yeah. I think the hierarchy goes. I think it's PK. Yeah. I think PK's got a lot oh, of the ideas. Gotta, yeah. PK's got a lot of like. I mean, like for the dad cover specifically, like uh, there were some old paintings that uh, PK found, and he was like, "Yo, I'm really inspired by these." Yeah. Like, um, it was the uh, I forget the painter, son of a man. It was like you, son of a man. Yeah, and then uh, he was just like, "I'm really inspired by this." Like, can we like uh, can we take the things that we built and create a visual based off of like these paintings? And I was mm-hmm. like, sure. And, uh, yeah, Alden's awesome. Shout out to Alden. Yeah, he's a beast. They yeah, do a good great. job of making, like, what I got in my head come, you know what I mean, to fruition. It that And that's, okay, that's a good phrase. It looks like some shit that just came from your head. Like, yeah, sometimes it's a little hard to do You're looking at it like, yeah. like, yo, he, this is has to be something that this dude was thinking about. Mm-hmm. Like, it can't just be like, oh, let's... Let's create this image. It's like, no, this is what came directly from, like, the joint with you with the caterpillar. Like, <laughs> yeah, bro. And that's why I think shit like that is important because, like, I, that type of stuff is just me going out there and, like, being in the environment. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Sometimes I like doing that with the videos. Um, like, we do a lot of conceptual stuff, but sometimes I like doing videos. Like, depending on the song, that year was more of, like, an environmental song. You know what I mean? I'm talking about how we like to be outside. We like to, you know what I mean, be be on Carson Street smiling. And I'm talking about in the song, I said, like, what I say in the song? I said, um... I'm on Carson Street. They're trying to take pictures. No, nah, no, nah, yeah, that. But, I mean, like, uh, what did I say? Watch how they kill some. We all could be living. Like, and I'm holding the caterpillar because it's like... I could I could easily step on this caterpillar and squish this motherfucker. I'm yeah. just, I put him in my video. He don't even know he in my video. You, you don't fe- know. You don't got to pay him neither. Nah, he a cater- <laughs> he, he was just out there. He pulled up on the scene just like I did. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's what's hard about them videos. It's like the shit that we capturing right then and there in the moment. Sometimes that concept shit it don't be right there, but it come, bro, and it look crazy when it come like that. It's just natural. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, I yeah. like going with that genuine shit right there. So I gotta ask you because my boy Day sent me a question. Oh wait, wait, wait! Shout out to my bro Black White Media. You know what I'm saying? He do my videos too. We we definitely made a couple classics, and we got you know what I mean some more on the way. He's definitely a beast though. You know what I mean? That's my bro right there too. Some on the way too. Yeah, we got you know really what I'm saying something really new on the way. Some, you heard it here first. They got yeah. some new shit dropping. But I gotta ask you this because Day sent me this. Um, so one, I got a, a personal connection with the Booker T video. Shouts out, cause um, my boy Duke Davis, that's my guy. I met him. Say in swear, yeah, that's my dude. We had him on the cast. I forget what episode. Yeah. So, uh, VA, that's the dude. Hold on, man. man. Hey, salute to Duke Davis. You know, what I mean, I'm gonna come watch a couple matches. But we talking about VA right now, man. VA had me up on the on the radio interviews. Oh yeah, up down, down you was downtown. Signed the wall, you know yeah. what I mean? With with yeah, some of the Berg, with the Berg legends, you know what I'm saying? VA, shots out VA. That's nah, it's it's cool. Like VA was one of the first people from my network of individuals in college that I saw actually going into doing the media it. Yeah, thing. facts. Um, and just to see him kind of segue into doing the wrestling, which you would never you would never think of that with uh with someone that you met in college, but I, I yeah. think it's I think it's great. I he think doing it's it, awesome. He's doing an awesome he's doing job his with thing. that wrestling shit, man. Yeah, he's doing his thing and it was crazy as um, you can't see now because I look mad frail, but he was bulky on these. We months. was um we used to. I was going down to uh, <laughs> now. Nah, I was a little bit. I was a little bit husky now. <laughs> though. I, I was what a I said. Bit husky, so, so. you know what I'm saying? Because I was in the gym like tight crazy, and I. It was crazy. I was going to the gym downtown, and I was CVA all the time, and mm-hmm. I didn't know what he was doing. And then I saw the Duke Davis thing, and I had to bring him on because, you know, it was just an interesting conversation that I wanted to have in regards to that. But he's doing his thing. Like, mm-hmm. shout out to Duke Davis, and I saw him in the Booker T video, and I'm like, this is local on local on local because he's even rocking the heart on the sleeve. Yeah, uh, shout out heart on the sleeve. And I think that's just it's 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 big. Like it's a subtle like super Pittsburgh thing. Um, but they sent the question uh, about about one of the lyrics. Yeah, what? Well, uh, Told that bitch come lick my feet. Five times like I'm Booker T. Now I don't watch wrestling a lot. Facts. Did Booker T get his feet licked? On? Okay. Not once. No. Okay. <laughs> now it was funny because the episode we just shot before, I was talking to people about my first pedicure. Mm-hmm. 
take care of your feet, fellas. Mm-hmm. You got to take care of your feet. It's nice. not it's not it's nothing effeminate about it. Yeah. Like, just take care of your feet. I got man. a little uh was it subungal hematoma? I got one of them right now, you know what I'm saying? Fucking up the toes cuz I be balling sometimes keeping the physical fitness going. I got a toe that's about to look looks like it's about to get Yeah. Amputated. But you got to keep the feet. I got <laughs> I keep the feet together. Yeah. I need none. I don't want to take it to a uh I don't want to get a pedicure just yet because I'm get a worried. Pedicure. Yeah, gotta go to it again. Because no matter how dietrist. good or bad your feet is, they gonna talk their own language. While yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they don't give a fuck about what you what you understand. What I'll, I think I'll pick up on you know. Yeah, it won't be. But I do, I do agree. You know what I mean? Keep the feet good. Keep the nails good. You know what I mean? I keep the nails clean and trimmed and shit like that. Same with the feet. But all about that line, though, bro, is like, I do got some nice feet. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I don't have no foot, <laughs> hey, I don't have no foot fetishes. You feel me? I don't watch foot fetish porn or nothing like but that. But others might for, you know. Yeah. Wait, what'd you say, bro? I said others might, you know, for you. Oh, yeah. Shout out to the, f- yeah, y'all yeah, do what y'all don't, do. Don't, don't do a, uh, a concert with the open toe sandals next to you. You got a motherfucker nah, rubbing on nah, you. You don't know what's going on with these dudes. Like, I don't have a foot fetish. I do appreciate a woman with pretty yeah, feet. Yeah, I love beautiful feet. God, nah. like, you don't Shout out to the feet. have pretty feet if you're a lady. No, nah, you got to have pretty feet if you're my woman. The, well, we don't want to necessarily. Man, you know what a pretty what foot What makes a pretty foot, though? Man, you want me to talk about what a pretty foot is? Okay, one, you shit can't. Okay, Points, if you're a right? female, like, your shit can't be rough. Nah, you know no what rough. I mean, like Smooth no feet. rough, no rough shit. Like when if I go to grab the ankles and put the leg up, if I mistakenly grab the heel, I don't want to be feeling like I'm grabbing sandpaper. Yeah, you know that I mean? hard like, shit. No callus. No. no, no to get I mean, technical, is callus. Okay? If you is got callus? a callus, it's got to be strategically placed. It can't okay. be <laughs> can't be in a spot that I'm touching. You feel me? Like yeah. I can't. I don't want to put unreasonable <laughs> expectations. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. so Facts. okay, now now uh, the foot shape. You know what I mean? It's got to be proportionate mm-hmm. uh, no big only, ass toes no big ass toes mm-hmm. um one one uh abnormality that i will accept is where uh because i had a shorty whose second toe which is generally the longest not the big toe but it's that toe, second one i've seen generally that the longest but i seen that middle toe was longer than it Fuck. and i dealt with it it fucked with me a little bit i ain't even gonna no, mess never, up you said the middle toe hold the on, middle hold toe on, bro, bro, bro. was longer than the second toe hold on bro, bro. you talking you about oriented. you talking about baby pinky toe so you got the, the one big next toe to here. it then the the one in the middle just a long as hell. It's, nah. long, it's longer than like a finger. I don't like know which I don't like know which toe one. was abnormal, but nah. the middle toe was longer than the the second toe next to the big foot, and it's a little strange. It's off putting at first, but I got past it because the polish was on point. Uh, yeah, you gotta keep the nails. You know, tough. you gotta keep your shit moisturized. Um, it can't be smelling. Nah, like corn no. chips. No you know, it's, it's the feet are big, man. Yeah, feet big. And ladies, if you walk around with flip flops, listen, I understand the old navy flip flop fetish. They one dollar a piece in the summertime. Yeah, fuck know. it. Keep the bottom of them flops clean. I don't want to see your whole toe imprint yeah. dirty on the and old I, navy flip flops. Hey, I, I, I suck toes too. You know what I'm saying? That's your business. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like you know what I mean. I'm not gonna say I never sucked a toe. I just hey, real, say that hey, real, I, I don't say I well, suck the toes. Real nigga don't lick the feet. You know what I mean? Well, look, you got it. Listen, man. Lick a toe, nigga. Fuck. It. Uh, listen. If you've been having sex for a long time, there's a lot of shit that you gonna try. You might as well. Right? You might as well. You, <laughs> and yeah, you yeah, she ain't gonna try nothing with me. No coke. Don't touch me nowhere. Nah, I ain't. Never had my toes no, sucked. Don't, don't, I had my eyeball either. licked, which was weird as fuck. I, I ain't never, never heard of that. Accent. I can't even imagine. You know, I don't understand what's sexy about having your eyeball licked, but she Nothing. did it. It happened, and it it happened to me. But um, it was great. I, I you know, remember her. Yeah, I definitely remember that woman. Nah, but some shorty going like the toe again. Some shorties be like, "Oh, nigga, suck my toe." Yeah, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Well, you so grow wide, wide, bitch. You, we, yeah. we, we, we had sex yeah. like that. Yeah. Ain't no telling what went down in that situation. And that's I've between you. Too. And not between you and the female. Yeah, I've sucked the toe <laughs> too. Yeah, you know? I mean, it. I ain't sucked everybody. To everybody. Me ain't either. Suck, yeah, I'm selective with the toes. Only only baby mamas get the toes. I ain't got no babies. I'm just saying, like my There's wife. No guarantee. Yeah, There's no, no guarantee. You getting your suck, your feet sucked. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, in, in in response to what's a good foot, it's just got to be a foot that 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 you can have around you. That yeah. you, the foot you don't is mind out. It. If, it's, it's not, if it's in your lap and you're staring you in the it face, it don't matter. It like if you, you. if if you can pull a white toenail polish off, that's a plus. I like, love that oh, shit. Like, oh my god, my girl do that, bro. I'm like, yeah, keep that white nail. You nails. throw the white nail polish on, like, and you should look trim, clean. It ain't cutting me in the bed. It's just exactly. soft. I can feel it on, you know, right up. You know what I mean? On the bed, it just rubbed me a little bit. I'm like, oh, okay. So <laughs> that's just what time it is, you know. But if your shit looking crazy, uh, you know. You gotta get so you some Look at my feet and oh, be yeah, like, yeah, none yeah. of this. Yeah. Re- reverse this, opposite of this. And we got 
Well, as a man, just the there effort rules for men? counts. Are there rules for what is the yeah, rule the for, effort what? counts, what? man. The just, rule. just do a. Oh wait, try. let me get back to the line though. The reason why I said the uh, line is just because you know what I'm saying. I just feel like I was royal enough to get my feet licked, and, okay. I, and I was a mood. Straight like I respect that. that. It was just a mood. I said it. You I know respect what I mean? that. And Booker like, T was all freestyle. That's how I felt. I mean, if we look at feet, y'all could y'all could reciprocate, ladies. If that's the type of you know what I mean, it ain't nothing. Listen, it's between you and the person you who and happens the person. in the bedroom. That's if, it. Man. If it's somebody who's uh, revealing everything that happened, you probably shouldn't be. Like, yeah, you a lame. Anyway. If you you a lame nigga, if you out here telling <laughs> what you and your girl do in your private time, <laughs> and you don't deserve the guts. But we had to ask that question because of uh, my boy, my boy sent the question in. But yeah, uh, yeah shout out, shout out to uh, shout out to Duke again, man. It's, yeah, shout it's out Duke cool Davis. to see just like a bunch of young brothers doing just they doing their thing, man, and just doing it like just doing it in realms that aren't traditional. And like even with rap, to see people taking rap and, and doing it in a form that's not necessarily the quote unquote traditional way to rap. I respect that. Like, take your personality, put it on wax, and mm-hmm. sell it to people. Like, because the best thing you could ever do is sell yourself. Because exactly. you always you the product. fucking you. Like, you always you. You know what I mean? Like, what, um, what do you feel about, uh, how do you feel about this mumble rap? Situation that's going on, like people. I rock with it. I'm turned you, up. So, do you? So, do you agree with the ideology that mumble rap should be its own category? I feel like these niggas just don't understand what it is. Okay, it ain't its own category. There have been people back when rap was rap that was sitting there not pronouncing their words or, or saying it as clear as others. Like it's all in. The, it's all a feeling. It's all in the vibe. Bum stickity bum stickity bum. Huh? Yeah, that's been nah, I don't know what yeah, the fuck they were saying. Nah, that's mumble. <laughs> that's motherfucking mumble in its own shit. I don't know what you're saying either, but somebody was out there like, oh, trying to say what it was. Right. And these niggas, they mumbling nowadays too. I wouldn't even call it that. I don't even call it mumble rap because I know what they saying. Nah, I can hear everything they saying clearly. I feel like you call it mumble rap if you don't like it. Yeah, you know? or if you like don't know how or what they're saying. Like yeah. Or if you're not trying to take the time to process what a nigga's saying. Like, I know what all of these rappers are saying. You yeah. get on the beat and be like, yeah, I can go on my end, something and I'm on the end. I'm listening. I know what you're saying, bro. I can hear that shit. Like, you just got to listen to it. It's, it's a feel. It's a mood. Like, nice. it's the mood that I think a lot of the, the people are in right now. And I don't, I mean, as as uh, socially charged as the climate is, I mean, there's a lot of things that are going on socially, but I feel like people have the freedom to take certain feelings and isolate them and be and and that be what you promote as opposed to back in the day like you know you're talking about nwa and all them for example they had to talk about the riots and all the shit that was going yeah. on that that that's what they focused that's on not but going on right indiv- now. It, it, well i won't say it's not going on right now but i think the we also have a little bit more freedom to focus on the positives of life. Yeah. Um, not to say mad. that anything disappeared, but there's a different approach. Like, like for example, individuals back in the day, they could have focused on having a good time. You know what I mean? Like, not every time you listen to music, you're supposed to go out and want to give a speech or donate money and do yeah. everything. Like every every now and again, you just want to have a good fucking time. And that's time. what you like, got when you brought up Kendrick earlier. Like, I like Kendrick, bro. Kendrick's definitely the legend right now. He's the he's the young goat. Oh, he's dope. I mean, he's the young goat, but like. You know what I mean? I bumped the Kendrick, and I get what I need out of it. I learned my lessons, and uh, you know what I mean? I'm on to the next, though, bro. Like, on the, see, thank you for saying that, because I be getting killed about my Kendrick opinion. I'll be like, it's not. I never said anything negative about him, but nah, he if, definitely, if, he if I'm waking up to go to work at 8 in the morning, am I going to listen to some shit that's going to put me in a worse mood? No, no I'm going to go listen you to gonna some listen shit to that, that got me yeah, feeling good. Yeah, 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 it's got yeah. me some Nigga, shit. That's like, getting me off the bed. Like, that's, that's the shit that keeps me going, like... The shit that I aspire to, like the things that I want to be doing. Not necessarily that I don't want to do anything positive, but every now and again, I want to enjoy the fruits of my labor. I want to enjoy life. Like, That's why you Especially work. since my accident, like I want to enjoy fucking life. Like mm-hmm. I was almost not here, so I could enjoy life yeah. on a different pace. And I just think it's just super, I think it's extra whack that there is a dissension 
between because I could sit with you just like I could sit with a Jaziri X yeah. and respect that y'all Shots from home. Pittsburgh doing your thing and you're making an impact yeah. and your messages or your music or whatever it might be different but it's still how this a black man's feeding his family how he's doing his thing mm-hmm. and he ain't promoting nothing negative yeah. like you ain't out here promoting no bullshit nah there ain't and, no bullshit in my music and you could definitely you know what I mean you could hop into my music and you know what I mean sometimes you'll catch a vibe where I'm just rapping and turning y'all up or you'll catch something melodic where I'm singing to the females or I'm singing or you know a mood but you always gonna get something out of my music and I don't like to say I preach positivity and shit like that but I do push that and I even be on YouTube I got a video on YouTube about uh, depersonalization and depression Yeah, I like talking about stuff like that cause I know you know what I mean I'm, I'm on this human experience with everybody else and I know out here it's definitely a little hard Powerful. to, you know what I mean, stay focused and stay happy because it's hard getting up every day and dealing with the shit that you got in the back of your mind. And even you talking about your car crash, sometimes, you know what I mean, you go through situations like that, they'll love to be ill, bro. And you don't be able to get through it or, you, you know what I'm saying? So I just be trying to throw something out there because I know how I get to be down in the slumps, though, for real. You feel me? In that black hole. So I just put stuff out there for people to just get up out of that mood. Yeah, no, nah, that was the perfect segue because I think one thing... And watching, you can get caught up in, in, in the 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 happy part of it, but you do have the depression and derealization visual. Yeah. And and what I think it adds, and I, I want to get your thoughts on this, is you get a full spectrum or full scope of an individual, which as a consumer would allow me to invest in you because yeah. you're a real per You're a real, like outside of you just being PK, the rap star, it's like, Yo, this is a real dude. Yeah, like, I done been through things just like y'all. Shit. And I ain't been through I just stuff I ain't been through that somebody else would have been through, but I like to put that stuff out there that I done been through because, you know, DP something hard. It's like a, a a feeling where you ain't in your body or you ain't in your mind. You can't really, you don't really feel like you inside your body, bro. It's mm-hmm. like, not like that sunken place won't get out, but it's something like that. You know yeah, what I'm that's, saying? That's extreme. The sunken. Place. Nah, it's, 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 it's pretty, it's, it's close to that though, bro. You, you, you feel real, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, Far away from your body Wow And there be people who Still hit me up to this day I just got a DM like Two weeks ago Dude bro This this really helped me out a lot Somebody hit me up yesterday I've been dealing with this For two three years bro Glad to see somebody Going through this And I could get And I could see somebody Made it up out of it So I just try to give shit To people that they could You feel better about So how difficult is that To translate that feeling Into music It ain't Um, ain't hard Okay no, it ain't hard because I be living in it and I go through it. So it's like it ain't nothing to speak about it and put it on the track or to put it. The video that I put up, it wasn't a music video. It was just like a me sitting down outside just talking to people, giving them tips and advice and, you know what I mean, like ways they could overcome the depression and all that shit like that. Because like, even my mom, she pushed that. She put that shit in me. You can't be you can't be out here getting, you know what I mean? She got arthritis. She ain't never let it slow her down. You right. feel me? Can't let you can't let this life shit slow you down. You feel me? Nah, you gotta live life. I mean, so is the process in making that type of track different than a mood, y'all? Yeah, cause I gotta be there. Mood, yeah, you know what I mean. I could just get off a couple brews, get off that gas, and you know what I mean. I'm in there turned up, but you know what I mean. Jams that I make, like uh, I made a jam called Lost. Like I feel so lost. Like you know what I mean. Them type of jams. I'm in that mood. I'm in a stool. Like got shit on my mind. I'm sitting down. I go in there and I talk about that. Like, it's just how I feel. Like, and I've been through, you know what I mean, them type of situations more often than others. So I know how to relate to those and spit those out a little bit easier than other shit. No, nah, I think it's um it's very, so as a consumer, um, you grow to appreciate an individual who can take a certain specific type of mood yeah. and create a track that, um, perfectly represents that yeah. Um, and it's not a track again it's not a track that you gonna go to all the time it's not a track that you but when you way down to the south side yeah. to go party it's not a track you gonna turn on but like I made I know I made I've lost a friend and I made a whole rest in peace track list of just tracks that just made Get me took me that. to that place yeah. so if I'm thinking about it I throw that playlist on and yeah. I think most artists you know they don't. They can't make that list. Yeah, they can't and do for that. For you to be able to 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 have the things that propel you to to success, but still then have that that realness, that real factor that and that's I can why put you on that list. That's huge. And that's why, like you know, what I mean, the music, the turned up shit is cool. Like like even when we was talking earlier about how rapid it is. Like some of that stuff is rapid, but the reason why I know I'm gonna live forever and be here forever with this shit is because I did the real shit though. 
The real yeah, shit ain't going to die. Real, the real never dies. Nice. The real lives on. Um, who? So if you had to do a top five, and I know this happens, but I, I do got to ask you, if you had to do a top five right now, uh, current rappers, not all time, but just top five go-tos, who would it be? I mean, I could give you like my top five favorite rappers. I don't want to do that right now because uh, I probably can't think of them all. But like my top five go to right now, like if I'm in my whip and I yeah. and I plug that auction and I'm yeah, I hate to ask all time. All time is just yeah. tough to. No, nah, my all time easy, but that's boring. Like <laughs> you feel me? Everybody got the same all time. You know what I'm saying? But um, my top five go to right now is definitely PK Delay. Uh, yeah, and um, I like Famous Dex. I like Lil Uzi. Who else I be bumping? Oh, uh, Playboy Cardi. I bump Playboy Cardi all crazy right now. Young Thug. Um, Yo, Young Dolph. I don't bump Young <laughs> Dolph all like that. Young Dolph is crazy, though. We be bumping Young Dolph turned up. And uh, I, I want to throw one more in there. Just, just cause. I always listen to Lil B, bro. I'm never going to stop listening to Lil B, bro. Niggas be like, bro, turn that shit off, bro. I be like, y'all niggas is crazy. Bass guy. I think uh, I think the knock on Lil B was just that one verse on the Wayne mixtape when yeah I do my thing bitch what's, what's up? up like nobody knew what he was talking about yeah that nigga so I that. never <laughs> I never uh, heard a Lil B track I do like Dolph yeah um, I want I've been seeing Playboy Cardi yeah. uh, so I, I bump Rich the Kids I, I bump all the young niggas bro the young niggas I love the young niggas it's right just now, a bro. different feel like feel I, good. I, I feel like anybody who is 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 uh, against or you know who's trying to to stop what they doing? Like you ain't having fun. You, you you a hater? Like it's it's one thing to enjoy, it's it's one thing to enjoy traditional old school hip hop, which I do, but I enjoy motherfuckers who can who can create a feel. Like mm-hmm. I mean, like especially when you in a in you a positive mode in life, you gotta listen to motherfuckers listen to the positive, doing the positive. Right. And then one thing that you add that I that I want the people to understand is. He gets that, but there's also this well-rounded spectrum involved. So if you invest in PK and, and you you know you listen to the music, you can get all types. Yeah, you gonna with get the feel. Artist. You gonna get the feel and the real. Yeah, you can get all the feel. So if you need to go out Saturday night or that. Friday night, you know what I mean. You got that for him. And then when you and your girlfriend are arguing Saturday morning, yeah. and then you depressed. You got that Saturday. rain. You got that rain on the <laughs> AC on YouTube right now. Shouts out, to, uh, what's her name? Tony. Tony James. Tony James. She made that rain on the AC. You <laughs> Arguing with your girl, you stressed out, don't want to go to work. You got doubles and dolls. You go yeah. and bump that shit, get on that grind, go make that money, nigga. Fuck you it. Never, you never got to change the artist. You know, yeah, you, just, you stressed out, you, you depressed. Switch up the feel that you saw in, and that's, and that's what I think's dope. Yeah, I mean, and that's something I feel like you provide, and that's something that I think that's where the industry is going. Yeah, um, you gotta like, you can you can make hit tracks mm-hmm. on just the turn up, but for you that's to the be lasting, route. for you to last as an artist. If you can also create that feel, you got it. Then you're gonna have that longevity. So, just closing uh, comments. One, uh, anything that you got coming up, I want you to shout out. Um, yeah, man, we um we dropping new dad merch. Well, first off, if y'all want to catch up on any music, you follow me on SoundCloud. Just look up PK Delay. SoundCloud.com backslash PK hyphen Delay. Same thing on YouTube. PK Delay. Same thing on uh, iTunes, Apple Music. If you want to stream my dad EP. Um, that's on Apple Music, on Spotify, that's on all them websites for y'all to stream. Uh, you go in there and just type in dad with a period at the end, you know what I'm saying? That's the dad EP, PK Delay. And then, um, you know what I mean? We got the merch coming back out next week, new dad hats, all the dad hats sold out. You know what I mean? Every time we do a drop, so I got new dad hats coming with new flavors, you know what I mean? Definitely new merch for y'all, new videos on the way. Uh, we got a show coming up. By the time this podcast come out, it might be that time. But I got something at the Drip Lounge across the street from, you know what I mean, where we do this podcast Shout at. Shout out to Matt. Yeah, you know what I mean? Shout out to Matt. Uh, community shit, you come touch me, come see me, come fuck with me. You know what I mean? And then I got a show uh, with J.R. Donato at Taylor Gang and Cap G that, you know what I mean? We got that going on at the Spirit Hall, so we're going to be in there. Just a lot of shows coming up. We got some of Lil Uzi and Rick Ross coming up. 
You know what I mean? Uh, Washington, PA, uh, Pet Zebra, he Big out there. Things. Yeah, we doing it. We doing it. You know what I mean? So just come fuck with us. You know what I mean? And we, we going to be out here, man. You got any dates or do we need to just, we can tag the dates to the cast, but we uh, definitely want to get we'll, people We'll out. tag them. I think right now one of them is June 17th. You know, uh, the cap, I don't know how much time we got left, but you know what I mean? I think the Cap G one. We got it, as much time as we need. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I think one is June 17th. Uh, the Cap G one is in, is in July. I think it's July 25th. Okay. Uh, the it's one with birthday. uh oh July twenty fifth yeah I think uh Bustin Black free my brother out the cell man Bustin Black man he ain't do shit man you feel me uh he gonna be out in a little bit but his birthday the day after that um but the one with uh what is it Rick Ross and Lil Uzi y'all gotta come out to that one that one's out in uh Washington PA and uh I got the date on that you know what I'm saying hold on let me get it for y'all real quick it's right here. Yeah, that's June tenth. You know what I mean? We okay. out there lose, you very friends. Wapo gonna be out there hard though. Pet Zebra. So y'all make sure y'all oh, come out there. That sounds like that. a good that's yeah. a good uh Yeah, Curse. Shout out my brother Curse. We out there turned up. So yeah, make oh, sure yeah, y'all come to that. That's a good one. concert. You definitely wanna and get then, out um, to that. Yeah, new mixtape on the way, P World on the way. Whole lot of new music, whole lot of new videos, man. Hey man, we want to thank PK Delay for coming down, coming to chopping with us, man. Yeah, thank y'all for having me, man. Oh, Shout out Buzzy, man. Shout out to you. We, we, you we feel doing me? it, man. Like we listen. If you're listening, look up PK Delay. Get on his SoundCloud. Listen to the music, man. Yeah, you get, get familiar. Any, anything you want, he provides. You know what I mean? If you want to just be riding in your car, yeah, getting yeah, hyped, yeah. turning up, he's got yeah, that. Yeah, if you yeah. gotta, if you gotta look into some things that's going on into your life. He's got that for mm-hmm. you, man, and support local. You know what I mean? Like it's it's it's, it's to 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 feel like you were part of the rise. You know, you don't want to miss that because this guy's gonna be yeah. it's gonna be a little bigger than you know, you. a drip lounge show. You Thank know you, I mean? appreciate like, that. It's gonna it's gonna be hard to get him a drip lounge in a minute. It's gonna yeah. be difficult, but he probably come do it. Yeah, you know I mean, because he love the city. He probably come show love. I'm always come show love. A lot of niggas won't, don't do that. I ain't gonna say nothing, but we gonna show love. All it ain't way. gonna be on Instagram. It's gonna be invite only. Though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, man, shout out to you. Um, yeah, appreciate shout you. out to Jacob. Like, shout out to Dad, Jacob. Now. Yeah, 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 man. I, I'm trying to get my yard together. So chill. yeah, you know, chill, 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 chill. Hey, that's it. That's <laughs> even better. Chill. Yeah. yeah, chill. That's that's the old. <laughs> that's Santana. the old school. Yeah, that's the old Joel chill. Santana. Chill. But you know, I'm, I'm, I'm. Listen, I'm trying to look all right to the young kids. You know what I mean? Nah, bro. I thought club. you was like 15, man. You know what I'm <laughs> nah, I'm old, bro. I'm 31. <laughs> so like, I went to the when I was going to the club. At first, it was, a, it was. I was in. I, I, I went from being in the whole club scene to going to the club and looking at people like, look at how these motherfuckers dancing. <laughs> I'm already like that now, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But nah, I, I, I enjoy your well-roundedness. I enjoy Appreciate the music. You. I enjoy the visuals. Just, just the whole package, man. Yeah, it's, thank it's you. really good and I, and Thank again you. i i really um i feel like people don't respect people in your generation and they really should look at what you guys are doing because yeah. you guys are making moves and you guys are feeding your family you guys are you making a way for yourself yeah. and it's and it's quality you know what i mean yeah, we like got it's, good it's hearts. quality shit so check out pk delay uh as always you can find the drinking partners on ig twitter and facebook at partners pie you can find us on itunes stitcher and lipson and google play because we googleable at Drinking Partners. You already know Drinking Partners is the crew. Epicast is the family. And we out of here.